No child is born bad. They called me a super predator. I was 17 years old. I was a child. I experienced exponential trauma that pushed me to join a gang. For me as a child, life was quiet at times and very loud at others because my parents fought a lot. There was no one that I felt comfortable talking to about what I was experiencing in my house. I would see my mom battered and bruised a lot. And you know, whenever she would say something to me, it was like, keep this between us, you know, like don't talk to anyone about it. That was hard for me because I would, you know, take those images, you know, outside of the house into the classroom. And, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, you know, I found myself thinking about what I may witness when I get back home with my dad being drunk when I get home. Would he be stirring up some type of altercation with my mom? I began to see and hear, you know, more gunshots in the neighborhood because now I was walking through the neighborhood a lot more. And, you know, I began to meet kids like myself who came from similar experiences. And from there, we began to hang out with older boys in the neighborhood. And, you know, these older guys were already active gang members. I remember being 12 when conversations first started to happen about actually becoming a gang member. And at the age of 14, I consciously made a decision to become an active gang member. I was charged with first degree murder and especially aggravated murder in the year of 1994 for participating in you know, what was labeled a uh, robbery of a convenience store. I caught a ride over to my 16 year old friend's house. He come up with this idea. He wanted to go into a convenience store, you know, steal more beer. And the plan for me was to stand and watch out as he went in and, you know, ran out with beer. So, you know, in my mind, there was no violence going to happen. Um, you know, unbeknownst to me, you know, he had taken his brother's loaded gun and, you know, gone inside of that store. So I heard, you know, two shots. He ran out and curiosity compelled me to go inside where, you know, I found um, you know, the body of Mr. Charles Cantrell, um, you know, on the floor unresponsive. Um, you know, we ran from the scene and, you know, we were arrested a few hours later. I was actually the bookmark. And I, I make sure that legislators know that. I went from a kid who had aspirations of going to college, but because of what happened in my home and how kids treated me, I became a gang member because those kids understood what I was going through. I served for the campaign for the Fair Standing of Youth. And you know, what that job entails is a meeting with legislators, parole boards, officials, district attorneys, and others, presenting policy reforms that point to age-appropriate sentencing for children who go into the adult prison system. I'd say the most important thing that I do is I connect with those children who were told that they were going to die in prison under the umbrella of ICANN, which is an acronym for the Incarcerated Children's Advocacy Network. And they are men and women like myself who went into the prison system as children and a system that was non-conducive to our development actually changed and transformed themselves. And now they're home giving back in very positive ways. You know, I'm a mentor. I'm at a local school or either I'm at a local community center working with youth who are really red flag for juvenile lockup. But I found that, you know, I have a voice amongst the community of these children. And, you know, it is my responsibility to go and steer them away from the same system that almost took our lives. Any child that has gotten off track and, you know, gotten involved in any situation that would lead them to commit this type of crime has to be a child that is broken and they should see that and feel compelled to find ways to help this child heal, not lock this child up for the rest of their lives. I know that no child is born bad.